Hi friends, today I'm going to I've got to paint some things out here and my jelly plate. I've got the 12 by 12 out because I'm going to do my zine at last. I found the time to do the zine. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to get some paint, some very light layers of paint on some paper and I want it as the background so I'm not going to do be too dense with the paint so I want to keep it light. So first of all I'm going to start off with some light colours and I'm going to use some extender to make the paint go a little bit further and to slow down the drying time. Actually, it's not extender, it's retarder. Oops, I'm not blew over. I've got paint all over it. It's actually, this is Lasco retarding gel and it's really good for slowing it down the drying time. You need to slow down the drying time when you're using a lot of colour, uh, um, very, very thin layers, because that's what I'm aiming for today. Very, very thin, subtle layers. I'm going to put a little bit of this out as well. I'm going to do a little bit of a gradient. Put a little bit of that out as well. And now, cleaning my spatula, I'm going to add a little bit of the retarder to the yellow. Stop it, it stops it drying too quickly, basically, because it will dry if I'm not careful. And it gives me a little bit of time to work. And I don't mind if the paper takes a little bit longer to dry. I'm going to do some on the red as well. You only need a tiny bit. I think about 10, 10 to 15%, I think. So I've got two piles there. And I'm going to roll it out with a larger brayer. You don't have to use a larger brayer, but I'm going to, to make life a little bit easier for myself. I'm encourage some of the colours to join up in the middle. So we get a nice little orange going on as well. I'll go to the top and I'm going to clean the brayer off onto one of my pieces of paper, save wasting the paint because I'll be able to use this as another background. That's lovely. Okay, and now I've got paint on my fingers. I'm going to very gently press that down. That's made a beautiful light subtle effect and there's still some paint on there so I'm just going to pull it off on an old I say old um, a piece of tissue paper which I can later use for collage nothing gets wasted here <laughs> so that's lovely okay so now I'm going to do a little bit of this purple now this actually has a fair amount of water added to it uh, but I will add a little bit of extender just to be on the safe side because I will be spreading it thinly and I think I'll add some blue as well so we'll have another, another gradient going on a little bit of blue there this is processed blue and that's fairly transparent as well. The colours I'm using at the moment are all very transparent. So I want them very, very thin. You can use paints that are already what they call open paints, like Golden do some. Um, some other manufacturers do them as well and I can't think off the top of my head. I know Golden's are very good. I've had them myself before and used them. They are lovely. So, rolling these out. This time we're going to use some stencils. Or a stencil. Rolling it out nice and thinly. Don't have to worry about it drying too quickly because I've now got the extender in it. That's a lot there, so I'm going to roll this off on another piece of paper. I'll show you the piece of paper near the end. And I'll show you now, actually. Not brilliant because I can't do it on a firm surface, but that's how that's looking. I'll be able to use that for something. I know. Right, now let's get a nice big stencil down. I've got this one. I'll use this. And what I'm now going to do is I'm just going to pull off what's in the middle very gently. Sorry if this jiggles the table. But I'm pressing quite firmly actually. 
Sometimes I just press lightly, but this time I'm pressing firmly. There, that's lovely. Love that, very nice. Okay, and what's left, I'm going to pull off on this other piece of paper. You know what happens, sometimes you like that one better, your second one, your, your kind of waste one better than your first one, but I don't know. I don't know. So, zines. So this is the background for the zine, is what I'm working on. And the foreground is going to be what the subject is about. Now, subject for zines. I think it's the hardest part, actually. What are you going to do for your subject? Well, there's several things you can do. You can write about something you're passionate about. That's covered that perfectly. Completely covered now, I love that. You can write about something you're passionate about, a favourite hobby, or um, I'm, going, I'm going to do one on my pet. You could do one on, well, I'm going to do one on my walks as well, because I've been doing a lot of walking. I'm going to do another blue one, but this time I'm going to add a bit of the yellow to it. Not too much. Just a little bit. Uh, I'm going to mix it all together with a little bit of extender again. We'll get a nice green. A lovely deep green, that is. But I want it fairly thin, so I'll be spreading it out thinly. That's a gorgeous colour. Lovely colour. Yes, walks. Um, Favourite books. A story, which doesn't necessarily come from a book. Just going to use a smaller brayer. This No, I'm going to use a large brayer. I do. See, it's much lighter when you spread it out thinly. Oops. Go over to the edge. Fading out towards the edge there. And I'm going to use the paint again on my other sheet. And this time I'm going to use another stencil with some leaves on. At the top. Maybe with some writing this end. Oops. So, press that down. I'm going to use the, my Baron, which is actually a lid from a candle. A bit like a Yankee Candle, but a cheaper version. The Yankee Candle ones aren't so good. <laughs> wow. So let's have a bit of the text over here. I don't want that to be too distinct because I will be using some text later on um, in the actual zine. This isn't my stencil. I mean, it's, I own it now, but it isn't my design is what I'm trying to say. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start another piece of paper and I'm going to pick up what's left there because I don't want to waste all that paint. And this can be a background for another zine at another stage. So yes, all sorts of subjects. People, people who you see when you're out and about. It could be, you could do a zine on a favourite movie, favourite TV programme, favourite music, favourite band. You could do a fashion one. You can do one on interior design, you know, how you would like your house to look or how your house looks now. Things like that. So there's plenty of things you can do. I'm going to have a bit. I'm just wondering whether to use some more of the blue. I've dropped a little bit. No, I don't want any more of the blue just yet. I know what, I'll have a little bit of the raw sienna. This is fairly transparent as well have that on that side so we'll do another ombre effect again I'm using some of the retarder to slow down drying time because I am going thin again this time I'm going to keep the yellow with no pattern in but the I'm going to put some pattern in the raw sienna You 
can just do one color at a time you don't have to do two at a time like I'm doing I just want the accidental events happening in between because I quite like that it's also quite an efficient way to spend your time right I'm now going to roll her off onto this other sheet I've just made I'll show you that there use this tree one here now to press it down there firmly and gently fade out there because I don't want hard edges in the middle of the page there love it so that's built up quite nicely there I just feel as if I need a bit more on this side I'm going to pull off what's going to pull off a bit here pull that off Oh, this collage paper is beginning to build up nicely. So let me know if you've done any zines yourself. I see quite a few people are doing them. It's funny, since I said I was going to do them, I seem to be seeing a lot of people are now doing them, which is rather strange. Right, let's see what this one looks like now. Ooh, that's looking lovely. I think that needs a bit of red or pink in it, doesn't it? I'll do that. Like this, needs, still needs some more there. I'm going to do another layer of yellow on there. Just yellow this time, just as it is, maybe. But I might do some more pattern on top again. I might do the leaves again, actually, going in the other direction. I didn't put the extender on that, did I? There. I need to work quickly. I'll take my time over the next layer. That was a bit foolish. This tissue I'm using is wet strength tissue and I get it from Amazon and it's worth buying in bulk because it works out a lot cheaper but it's brilliant for collage. I absolutely love collaging with it. There, that's a lot better. That's good. I'm going to come in with a darker yellow, I do believe, and do some more leaves. In fact, maybe a bit of raw, um, burnt sienna. That'll be nice. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Burnt sienna is fairly transparent as well, especially with the retarda added. Retarda also works as a bit of an extender as well. I don't want it to be too dark, so I'm going to roll it out very thin. I don't want it to be too dull. It'll be quite nice against the yellow. Leaves going the other way, so they're going up. Hmm, a bit too busy. Use a little bit of it over here. Lovely. See, I like that. I really like that. Okay, we're getting it covered now. It's looking, it's getting there. I'm getting quite excited about that. Just a little bit of the magenta up in that corner. And then that's the background done. Now you could, when you've got your gel plate out, make lots of backgrounds. And I shall probably do that and then I shall come back and show you what I've done because you don't want to sit through all of that lot. In fact, I should have said this at the beginning, if you want to zoom forward and miss out the gel printing part, did I put the extender in? Yes, I did. Um, if you want to miss out the gel printing, you could have just zoomed forward. Um, I shall put those chapters in to make that a bit easier for you to do. So yes, um, I'm going to be back shortly with what I've been doing. I'm doing, I'm recording this video over several days, so <laughs> there's no pressure. I 
lovely okay we'll put that aside and I shall be back shortly okay I've got a lovely big pile of backgrounds now that I can use for my zines by the way I meant to say you don't have to use gel prints for your zines you can use papers from all sorts of sources you could do some collage you could do painted papers you could use actually um, scrapbooking type papers as long as they're not too thick I find it for this process I'm going to show you if they're too thick it's kind of difficult to fold them so anyway these are the ones I've got so far that I love that's actually two sides um, which I might use in something else <laughs> love that one this one's one of my favourites love this one but I've got some splodges on oh that still feels damp I've got some splodges on this one's probably a bit too busy but it might work folded up in the way I'm going to be folding it love this one that's absolutely gorgeous but this one's my ultimate favorite so what I've done is I've scanned that and I've printed out a copy and I'll show you that in a minute but first of all I'm going to show you some zines that I've collected over the years I do love zines so I enjoy collecting them these are the, these are two that I made this one I sold in my shop and I just made a limited edition and now they're all sold out so I won't have any more of those but this one's still available and this is a bit surreal just a bit of fun just found words I think it was gel printed background a bit of collage and some found words to create just a bit of a story anyway these are the ones I've collected now some of them are from a friend of mine I think this yes that's her that's hers and look at this tiny one so we do swap sometimes but she I think she makes more now Zach Foster I think I've got a couple of his is that a Zach Foster I can't remember I thought I had a couple of his. No, these are all different ones. Oh, here's the two. I think that's a Zach Foster. Yeah. So Zach Foster, you can download his and print them off yourself, which is great. And he has all sorts of really interesting subjects. This is, these are chatting with people. It's called Seamside. He has a whole series, series of those, and I love them. So they're fun to collect. This one is How to Get Unstuck. And I love anything on creativity. That's really helpful. I like that sort of thing. So I've got that one. I love this one this is about forgiving yourself and I think that's really good and it talks talks you through it this is something I enjoy do I like something that's meaningful this one is how to create a zine first steps in zine making what is a zine things like that how to make your zine which I'm going to be showing you for some reason this didn't print off oh I know why it didn't print off properly because if it's American and British and they're A4 and American letter size, the folding doesn't always work properly. So I just should, should just trim them down. Oh, there's something inside that. Oh, there's a little bit of paper. There we go. This one is, what the, uh, what the heck do I make? An exercise to inspire new crafty projects. And that is a downloadable one that I found on Etsy. You can buy downloadable ones on Etsy. And this is a pocket guide to zine making, which I think I've just, yeah, how to fold them and everything. So I've got a couple of those. This one I love, but it was difficult to print out because it's larger and you're meant to print back to back. And it's kind of complicated. So I ended up not printing back to back, but it's actually just pages from her journals. And I think that's a great idea. So this is fabulous. It's a lovely one. It's really enjoyable to look through actually. So that's a few zines. Now I'm going to show you what I did. So this is the page that I liked. Uh, what I've done is I've scanned it and then I've printed it out again on some different paper and I folded it. So now I have a little book with different pages like this. And I love it. Absolutely love it. Actually, that's upside down. No, is it? Oh, no, that's the front page. I just love this bit as the front page, which means that is upside down, but it doesn't matter because it'll probably get covered up with writing and stuff anyway. I've got an idea of what I'm going to be, I know what, and I've planned out what my subject's going to be and how I'm going to lay it out. But there's a way of folding these and I'll show you. So this is how to make a zine on a single sheet of paper. You can use your photocopy paper, basically. So if you're in, the Amer in America, it's the US letter size. And if you're in the UK, it's A4. So what you do is you take your sheet of paper, you fold it in half that way. You open it up again. You fold it in half that way. Then you fold in and you fold in and use a bone folder or the back of a pair of scissors. And then you fold it in half again. Oh no, before you do that, you fold it this way and you cut along this line here. 
I'm going to do a sheet that you can, you can download for free on my Patreon. So I'll link to that down below. So in case you forget, I'll do the instructions and how to do it. And then when you've cut it, you basically do that. And then you fold it. So you've got the front, page one, two, three, four, five, six, and a back page. So I do the folding before I actually start working in it. But if you're very efficient, <laughs> you can actually design it in one sheet like that. But I'm not that efficient. I prefer to work in the little book. But I'm thinking of doing that in a liner cut at some stage, but that's a, that's a long way off till my hand's better. So I've got this little book now and I'm going to, now before I go any further, I did talk about it as I was doing gel printing, but if you zoom through the gel printing, you may have missed that. But I printed this off once upon a time. I can't remember who by, it might be Zach, I don't know. Just some thoughts about how to go about your subject matter, because that's the hard part I find. What is your subject matter going to be? So things you're inspired by. So you, it could be a person, it could be a place, it could be some music, it could be some art, it could be theatre, it could be something on TV, anything like that. Your comic, favourite comic, things like that. Things that you're inspired by. You could do a whole, whole zine on that subject. You could do a whole zine on tools and materials that you love to use. It doesn't have to be art related materials. It could be you've got favourite gardening tools. It could be your favourite uh, car mechanic tools. It could be anything like that. Colours and textures. Now, I'd love to do that because colour sings to me. I mean, I love colour. I think you can tell. I am doing a whole zine on just one colour. You could do a whole series on all the different colours. How fabulous would that be? You could take photographs of everything. Imagine your favourite colour is yellow. You could go out and about with a camera, take photographs of all the yellow things you've seen, pop that in a zine. That'd be fantastic. Textures as well. You could um, experiment with textures. You could do rubbings. You could do painted textures. You could do um, actual textures. You know, you could have a textured zine. Wouldn't that be great? And then you can think about a subject matter. It could be, you could write about something political. A lot of zines are political. It could be something about, again, it could be a favourite book. It could be a favourite film. It could be something like that. Anything like that, really. It could be something you're interested in that other people probably are interested in as well. You may have a fascination for a certain antique period you could have a fascination for um, vintage cars anything like that would be great as a subject so think of what what drives you what what do you really enjoy thinking about and reading about and um, yes whatever sings to you you can do so there's lots of ideas there so for this one my subject subject matter is and I've planned it and I've lost a bit of paper that I've planned it on now here it is my subject matter my subject matter is going to be why walk and I'm going to do a lot of writing in mine because I'm going to write but I'm also going to do some images so I'm going to get on with that now okay I've zoomed in a little bit more so we can see a bit more clearly I've carved a stamp of a foot a boot print and I'm going to have that here to just lead you into the story so I'm just going to stamp it with some stays on ink try and get it right now if you want to see any more about hand carving stamps I have a video and I'll link it up here and um, you can see how that's made but there we go let's press that down firmly lovely love it all right now I'm going to write the title and I'm just going to handwrite my handwriting isn't brilliant but that doesn't matter anything goes I'm going to put a bit of paper between between my hand because otherwise I'm going to smudge that aren't I that there like that they're gonna have why I'm just using a sharpie why walk so I can thicken those letters I think I might I think this sharpie is a little bit past its best stands out quite well doesn't it and so I'm just going to fill in the pages now I've done some rough 
rough draft you can see there's lots of crossing out and things but this is the way it's going to go I'm going to raid my stamp supplies and see if there's some other stamps that aren't handmade that I can use so number one would be for fresh air and light I'm going to stamp something there and then here I'm going to draw a sun a very simple sun and this says sun not guaranteed sun not And here's a picture of a cloud because you know we're in the UK I am and it rains a lot and it has rained a lot I have never known a season like summer was rainy autumn was rainy winter's been rainy next page is nature now I'm going to stamp something on this there that's better love that Mm. Mm hmm. Quick kitten shot. Here she is. <laughs> and only get a little one. That's it. Put the away. Number two is nature. Nature. Getting into the countryside is good. Next page, social. Is that number three? Yeah, number three. Walking could be social activity. It isn't always, but quite often is. Well, I have to draw something. I might just draw a dog there. And on the back, I'm gonna put number four with the health benefits. Let's do some more footsteps. Fill up any blank spaces with footprints. So far, I like it. Right, I'll be back when I've got the next bits to finish it off. Then I'll sign it and we'll call it done. Okay, I've finished. So it goes like this. Why walk? Got the stamp of the footprint. One, fresh air and light. It helps us to sleep better and improves a healthy appetite. Coming home to a cuppa is a great reward and is a cup and some biscuits or something I'm not quite sure what they're meant to be cakes I don't know <laughs> sun not guaranteed and they've got a cloudy rain and I've put comfy waterproof footwear is good and dress appropriately I find anything with the hood is a help uh, nature getting into the countryside is good even an urban environment can offer some greenery find some parks or gardens pick some flowers or leaves that's obviously when it's appropriate. Three, social. Walk with family or friends. I meet many people and dogs for a chat and a scritch. Count the squirrels, feed the ducks, cheer other walkers and cyclists and runners on. We are all in it together. And at the back, health benefits. Number four, health benefits. Good for your heart and joints as well as your mental health. There it is, my zine. So that's how easy they are and how loose and free you can be with them. I mean, I could type, I could have done a typed version, uh, but phew, I just enjoyed using my hands. <laughs> there you go. That's how we do zines. I shall have this downloadable. I should draw on it where you cut. And yes, it'll be a free downloadable. The link will be down in the description. That is today's video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this has inspired you to do have a go at making a zine yourself. I'd love to see them. If you do, please let me know. Please hashtag me. If you post them on Instagram, not hashtag me. I think you can at Carrie's Mixed Media. That's who I am on Instagram. The link to my Instagram is down in the description as well. If you, if you do at Carrie's Mixed Media, it should pop up in my feed and I should be able to see it. So... I'd love to see it if you have a go and tell me down in the comments if you're going to give it a go as well. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.